Fire and ice can be a powerful combination, especially for those chasing pucks and cups. And when sprinkled with brilliance and defined by resilience, there are reasons to dream. The Rangers have orchestrated a return to prominence with a one-for-all concept that put the energy back in the building and put the hockey world on notice. And after a lightning strike in the final four, the blue shirts are back and hungry for more. With room for improvement and designs on another banner year, welcome to Fire on Ice. And welcome to our special Rangers season preview presented by Chase. Madison Square Garden is once again open for business and the Rangers intend for this season to be all business. To use last spring as a springboard to bigger and better. It's so great to have you back with us everyone. Welcome into our Delta MSG studios. John Giannone alongside Steve Valiquette. One day shy of four months ago, we sat here and we talked about what could have been so close yet so far. Rangers now among a handful of teams with legitimate Stanley Cup aspirations. How fair and how accurate you think that is? As long as they get off to a great start, John, it's, it's really important in the NHL for everybody to understand that the playoffs are typically set in stone by Thanksgiving. Last year, the only exception was Columbus came out, Boston went in, but every year it's, it's a big measuring stick point. The Rangers are not going to sneak up on anybody this year, and they have to understand there's a sense of urgency from puck drop of game one tomorrow night. And as with all teams in the NHL, the Rangers made news and moves in the offseason, and maybe most significantly, they have a captain now. For the first time in more than four years, it is Jacob Truba, the 28th captain, the fourth consecutive American-born captain for the Rangers, and an enormously popular choice inside the room. He's a captain for a reason. and You don't have to become something else all of a sudden. He's got a pulse for, for the game, for the team. It's incredible to see when things might not be going our way. You know, a big shot block, uh, stepping up and catching someone with a big hit. Everyone sees the hits, but it, it's more than just you know, throwing a hit. He's, he's vocal when he needs to be. He doesn't force anything. And I think we're all super happy with, with that decision and you know, expect it to be pretty similar to how he was last year, just a letter this time instead. I was thrilled. Um, you know, I love Troobs. He's, he's been there for me since, since the moment I've got here. Troobs has been everything for me. Guy I can look up to, guy I can talk to about anything. I can go to him with anything, about anything. He's just such a trustworthy guy and really class that guy. So I think there was no better fit for that captain spot than him. All right, so it's Truba, Roman Yossi in Nashville, Jared Spurgeon in Minnesota, the only three defensemen captains in the NHL. From your perspective, Steve, why is having a captain important, and why is Truba the guy? It sends the message to everybody in the room, the organization, the fans around the league, we're a contender. Uh, Stanley Cups aren't delivered to teams that don't have captains. The Rangers didn't have one last year. They have one now, and they did it over the summer for a reason. Set the bar high, let everybody know we're coming, and Truba set everything up for this last season with the way that he set his body in the middle of the ice. He won the series with the hit on Crosby against the Penguins. He blocked shots, and he gets into the areas where it's not easy to go. And he's wearing that captaincy, and I'm sure at some point he looks up and he sees Leach and Messier. And you know what, John? John uh, Jacob Tribble was born in the year 1994. Interesting. Who knows? There you go, full circle. The announcement was just one of the moves that radically changed the face of the Eastern Conference finalists. Ryan Strom now in Anaheim. Andrew Kopp returned home to Detroit. Frank Vetrano also a duck. Alex Georgiev joins the cup champion Colorado Avalanche. Joining the Rangers are pesky second line center Vincent Trocek, 37 year old uh, Ranger nemesis Yaro Halak in goal, and prodigal wing Jimmy Vesey, who made the roster after a solid preseason on a professional tryout. Now, at age 29, Trocek chose the Rangers after losing to them in seven games as a hurricane. His ability to win faceoffs and his ability to be annoying to the opposition did not go unnoticed. Hyper competitive in, in your face, um, strong on draws, strong in the D zone. He, he's a competitor. He plays with a bit of an edge, but he's, uh, I think his skill is probably the biggest thing. He's, he's quick, he can think the game. I mean, the easy, I think, thing to think of is he's playing with bread. Those two have a chance to, to be really good together. He's the type of player, at least for me, that I hate to play against. I'm, I'm happy that he's on our side. I did not like playing against him. He was tough to defend. Uh, he likes to run his mouth a little bit out there. Uh, so it's a little nicer having him on, uh, on our side. We actually spend a lot of time against each other in the playoffs. I think every, I think all seven games we play every shift against each other. I've played him in the playoffs for the last two years now, so 
I think that was the first thing I texted him. I was like, thank God I don't need to play against you for a third straight year. High praise from his now teammates. You heard them talk about Trocek's skill sets. Which one in particular will most fit this team, you think? The way that he plays in front of the net. Think about playoff goals, broken plays, rebounds. He had a 48% shooting percentage on those types of scoring opportunities. That led the NHL. This is something the Rangers need more of. It's back check offense coming through the neutral zone with a four check that's heavy. Trocek plays that system for a few years in Carolina. He knows how to run it. He knows how to be off the pile and be able to keep plays alive. This is his skill set. It's hanging on the puck in the upper part of the ice, waiting for the defenseman to flank in. This is going to allow the Rangers to set up that net front play. It doesn't have to be pretty. It has to get the job done in the playoffs. He knows how to play this game. Another thing, I want to see how he fits with Panarin. I think that his ability to finish the East-West pass, it's going to be about a 15 to 20 percent difference on the increase than what we saw with Strom. That should help as well. And Vincent Trocek will make his Rangers debut Tuesday night at the Garden. It's the Rangers and the Tampa Bay Lightning. That game will be on national television on ESPN. We will be here, though, to cover it pregame and postgame. So tune to MSG beginning at 7 o'clock Tuesday night for all of the preview of game one of the season, Rangers and Tampa Bay Lightning. We've got much more ahead on our special Rangers preview presented by Chase, including a look at the NHL's best bromance. Mika Zibanejad, Chris Kreider, first line, first rate. Welcome back to our Rangers season preview special presented by Chase. Together, Mika Zibanejad and Chris Kreider had 81 goals, 41 of them on the power play, 158 points as well. If there's a next level for these two guys, Steve, that's a very high bar. So what it's all about is maintaining the level, John. Uh, you can't really get much higher than that, but what you have to do is you have to adjust because everybody around the league is going to be adjusting towards them, trying to find ways to cover everything that they are showing you in the pre-scout. And when you go through a season where Mika has 19 goals off the one-timer, they're certainly going to front his shot. When they do that, maybe that opens Kreider up on the back side. These two know each other so well off the ice, the fluency they have then blends onto the ice. Mika, he had 37% of all of Kreider's goals accounted for with his first assist. Again, that wedge, that's going to be a tough play to execute night after night, being that there's more coverage. But when you look about the cross-ice play there, last season, you see Kreider now has 15 goals across the ice, where in the previous three seasons he averaged four. Big difference there. Indeed, yeah. We know this training camp in preseason was all about getting the players' game ready, but also identifying the right wings on this Ranger team this year. At least for night one, it's going to be Capo Caco on that top line, who seemed to find himself in the postseason, Steve, even though he was scratched in that last game. Yeah, and that should really set a fire, right? It gives you that chip on your shoulder that helps the excitement a little bit, just to reignite it and then start your new season. And I'm sure he had a great summer fired up because he did have a good postseason up until the Tampa Bay series, and he's had a great preseason. And nothing matters more to a young player that wants to play higher up in the lineup than to score in preseason. He made some nice plays during the playoffs, first round series, had a couple of nice dishes from behind the net. This is where he started to dominate and feel good about his game. But make no mistake, I think it's really important that he's been scoring in the preseason. It's something that he needed in his game just to drive that confidence home a little bit more and then carry that on. Nobody needs a fast start to the season like he and Lafreniere. When you're talking about the young guys that are trying to get a little bit of a stronger footing in the league. It's important that he gets off to a great start. Well, we've mentioned several focal points. We talked about Vincent Trocek. How about the guy to his left? And that's Artemi Panarin. 96 points last year. Now in his fourth year as a Ranger, also about to turn 31. Maybe mentorship of young Vitaly Kravtsov becomes part of his resume, too. It's something there. And I think that at the same time, uh, he's going to have a chip on his shoulder as well. He wasn't happy with his playoff. He wants to do a little bit more as far as his offensive career creativity goes it's going to be there right off the hop like it's been in the past seasons 96 points last year no slouch at all and I think he's really one of the best passers in the game John if I was to look at my top five passers in the NHL it goes McDavid Kane Marner Goudreau Panarin so he's one of the guys that is known for passing but at the same time I thought in the last two months of the regular season started to establish his shot and the more that he does that the more qualified of a passer and then you have more of a voice in the locker room you can mentor the young guys I think this is a great fit for he and Kravtsov 
Kravtsov just has to understand the more reps that he gets with an unpredictable at times Panarin, you can get the pace of where he's going to be putting the pass, inside ankle, the spin, where he wants it. If it gets to his wheelhouse, he should be able to deliver. You mentioned Panarin's inconsistency in the postseason. Maybe from game one against Pittsburgh to game six against Tampa, the most consistent Ranger line was the so-called kid line. Two-thirds of that line still intact with Lafreniere and Heedle left and center. What do you expect from them? Well, I just expect growth. It's, it, you know, you get drafted and it's based on potential. And then you have to be in positions to succeed to gain confidence. And when you gain confidence, then we really get to know what you are or what you can fulfill your abilities to be. I think the Rangers had a very good showing from Lafreniere. Number one, he showed that he could play the physical game. He's not going to back down from the star players in the league. He was respectful, but he wasn't going to be disrespected. And I think that his late to end season success where he had some great one on one plays, it fed his confidence. Heedel, by the same token, had success in the playoffs because he was able to get open. Now, this is a player that has to separate from the pile so that he has room to elevate the puck. When he does that, he's one of the best Rangers at executing the one-timer. He's in a position to succeed again this year, too. Yeah, so with Heedle and Lafreniere and Kako and Kravtsov and some others, the development of that young core of the Rangers can't be overlooked or overstated for success this season, and it certainly isn't from the veterans. If you look around the league, you, the, the teams that win have, have those young players that come up and do well, and there's things that older guys or guys of more experience can help with, but it's also time. It's also playing more games. You need guys to take the next jump, um, you know, myself included, every, everyone included, but yeah, the young guys um, are going to be counted on and, and going to play pivotal roles for us. You know, I think we're all excited to see where everyone uh, goes this year. You can't build a team with, you know, $10 million superstars up and down the line if you need your young, young guys to step up. Those guys did, and they, they really helped us. It's hard to come here as a young player, especially from other countries, different city, different lifestyle. Hockey's different, so I think just watching them kind of push all that aside and just play and the smiles they had on their face in the playoffs, I think that's where I want them to be at all year. Steve, how much you agree with that? How much did last spring help what could be for these kids this year? Okay, it's going to help when they get there. Uh, the only concern right now is do we have team urgency to start the right way so we can experience that? Because it's a long year, and it happens right now. Everybody's mindset has to collectively be on the build, but you can't have the build unless you have the right fundamental approach. And I'm just hoping the Rangers get off to a really good start so they can experience that again. Well, we've got plenty more to come on our Rangers season preview presented by Chase on the shoulders of brilliance. What can Igor Shosturkin do for an encore after a goaltending display for the ages? That and plenty more when we come back. Welcome back to our Rangers season preview presented by Chase. These numbers scream volumes. Igor Shesterkin easily the lowest goals against average in the league, easily the highest save percentage, six shutouts, 36 wins, a near unanimous Vesna Trophy winner, a Hart finalist as well. All that and the unending admiration of those in front of him. Isn't that what everyone experiences during their initial career? <laughs> We've just had a wealth of riches, right? Like to go from, from Hank to Igor, it's... Uh, I mean, they're two very different individuals. Everyone will tell you, Hank included, that Igor is a little bit more laid back. He's absolutely loved by everyone in the locker room, and everyone was so thrilled for him the year that he had. And, and, and to get the Vesna, obviously, was a cherry on top. You couldn't count all the times he, he bailed us out and uh, made that unreal save where you're looking down the bench and everyone's jaws dropped. The way he was able to keep us in games, I mean, we talk about that resiliency we had, but doesn't happen if he's not stopping the puck. The biggest thing with him is how calm he is. Obviously, you can look at his save percentage and all the net numbers and how many saves he does and the pucks that he stops that he shouldn't. There's a lot of goalies that are very fundamentally sound and then some that make the crazy save, and I feel like he's one of the few guys that can do both consistently. He makes the saves he's supposed to make, and then he makes the saves he's not supposed to make, too, and I think that's what makes him so special. Great words from all his teammates, but as Chris Kreider said, we, we've just been so spoiled around here for almost two <laughs> decades now with what we've seen in the Ranger goal. In your mind, Steve, how and why is this guy so good so relatively soon in New York? Well, the interesting thing about his year last year was that up until December 29th, his environment was the 27th hardest. And then from that point up until the end of the season, it was second easiest. 
So for Igor to experience a very difficult place to play and then have an easy one and keep his save percentage steady in both a difficult environment and a relatively easy one, it shows me he can play anywhere. And that, that to me, is really a show of confidence. And then long view, when the team is contending year over year, you know you got a guy that can play in the tough games or in the ones where he's only going to have 14 or 15 shots. So that's the esoteric, the practical. When we sit here every game and analyze Igor Shesterkin's brilliance in goal, what most stands out to you? I think the consistency from chance type to chance type. When you look at slot chances, he ranked first in the league with the highest save percentage. Clear-sighted shots like this one right here, he ranked third in save percentage. East-West plays like these here, he ranked fourth. Screens, he ranked third. And full breakaways, he was first. He had 18 breakaways that were full length of ice, and he only gave up one goal. He's very confident in his approach, John, and we can see that no matter what type of environment he's playing in. He's so dominant in so many areas. He had one of those seasons for the ages. He had 37 goals saved above expected, but he lost the last four games of the season. And you know what? I think he's going to have a chip on his shoulder, too. I think he's going to come back with bite. We've talked about Kako, Panarin. I think a lot of the players Although they had so much success, I think collectively they're going to know how to grind this one out. That's a really interesting point. And also, Shesterkin will have a new backup. We mentioned it's Yaroslav Halak, Ranger killer throughout his career, 24-9-1 with five shutouts against the Rangers. What do you expect from him under Benoit Allaire's tutelage? And about how many games do you think is a target? Well, here's the thing. It's, it's games that are going to relate to points in the standings. The backup goalie has to deliver 25 or more points in the standings to make the playoffs. Every team had that last year with the exception of Nashville. They were the only team that made the playoffs when their goalies had fewer than 25 points in the, in the standings. The biggest thing about Halak and how he's going to change his game, he's going to beat every pass, he's going to be on his feet, and he's going to play in straight lines. That's exactly the way that Allaire wants his goalies to play. He may even back you up a little bit in the crease, but he wants you to be active. You, you take a look at Shesterkin here. This is every morning for the backup goaltender as well because you've got an extra 30 minutes and a little bit more energy to keep your technique up. That's why Allaire has been so strong with the backup goalies over the years. He gets you prepared to play games. That's the impact that Halak's going to have to have. It starts with the goaltending coach and having the right structure. All of those things are in place. In fact, the Rangers have the best tandem in the NHL. They have the best tandem in the NHL, and that's by uh, Valley's view. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well, the group of six in front of the Ranger goaltenders has become an enviable lot. We'll get defensive when we return. Will this season provide another round of Miller time at Madison Square Garden? That and more when the Rangers season preview presented by Chase continues. We continue on the Rangers season preview special presented by Chase. Defensemen always take special pride when a goaltender wins a Vesna trophy. Yeah. Along those lines, measure the worth to Shesterkin of that shutdown pair of Adam Fox and Ryan Lindgren. It's a great point. Defensemen are on the ice for hundreds of shots during a season. The key to a top pair is that 70% or more of the shots they're on the ice for are low danger. And that fits the Lindgren Fox pair perfectly. Uh, this is a pair that only allowed 10 east to west goals all year. Uh, Roman Yossi himself was on for 17. So you can imagine when the top guys are doing the work there, what do you get? You get a goaltender that can now face the puck and get out in front it and be aggressive. And when you have players playing the physical brand that these two guys actually do because they're not the biggest guys in the world, it's harder to get inside. And they clear well and they add offense. And you put those things together, and it's, it's one of the top pairs in the East, for sure. The Rangers have been blessed in recent years. Yeah, and certainly Lindgren and Fox will get the lion's share of the minutes among the six Ranger defensemen. But when you consider the steps made by Keandre Miller, who's really more almost a 1A now yeah. instead of a second, and Braden Schneider's emergence and development at just turn 21 is just going to be so important to watch on the Rangers' blue line throughout the year. There's a lot of buzz around the NHL about these two young defensemen, and Keandre 
Miller is going to take another significant step. Uh, in fact, he better get signed up soon because he's going to be very expensive to keep. He's one of the top guys at being able to get back into position when being up ice. And that's great because he has so much offensive upside, you want him to use that. As well as the physicality and defend, I think every piece of his game right now makes me feel very confident in saying that he's going to be one of the top 10, 15 defensemen in the NHL uh, very soon. He's that type of impact player. Schneider, he reminds me so much of Dan Girardi. He stands up, he's physical, he did his time in the minors, and then he came up and you couldn't send him back. He had such an attitude in his game that was, make me keep you. And it's such a good impact for a young guy to be able to feel that confidence so quickly. Alongside Braden Schneider on that third pair D will probably be Zach Jones early in the season. Libor Hayek still around. Yep. Uh, where do you see the development in that pairing? Well, you know what's going to be interesting is what opportunity does Jones get? Uh, you know, as soon as something goes wrong, whether it's injury or bad play, you might get an opportunity in a more offensive role, a few more minutes. Uh, in a lot of ways, he's a younger, smaller guy that might be able to move up and down the ice like a Gerard in Colorado. And there's a, definitely a placeholder. If, in fact, it doesn't go well, somebody older could come and fill in that's a bigger, more physical presence. But for right now, he's going to get the opportunity, and that's what you have to do. You have to have the same attitude that Schneider had, which is make them keep you. And every shift, every second is going to count for that young man. Let's drop the puck. Remember, <laughs> opening night Tuesday night at Madison Square Garden Rangers and Tampa Bay Lightning the game will be on ESPN we will be here for complete comprehensive pre and post game coverage it all begins at 7 o'clock night one for a team with a clearly defined dream heading into the season we wanted to win a Stanley Cup we came really close to that and uh, yeah I think the expectation is the same this year and we'll obviously be disappointed if if that's not the end, end goal for us. That's the goal. I think, uh, you know, every year uh, that's the, the main goal. And uh, uh, it, it's fun, too, because we know we have, uh, we have the team to, to make runs like that. Being a very young team with a lot of young players, um, even, you know, some of our vets who, myself included, haven't played playoff hockey for a few years, uh, having that experience um, and having success at that point as a group, I think, is... Uh, are going to be instrumental for us moving forward. We were in the conference finals, but we were also one game away from being out in the first round in five games. The great thing about our sport is last year means absolutely nothing. We'll take some of the memories and the lessons, but it's a, it's a new season. See, everybody wants to win the Stanley Cup, and in my opinion, it's the hardest trophy in sports to win. So uh, I don't think any team is looking at the season saying it's Stanley Cup or bust, but for a team like this, I think that we're looking to make a run. I think this year is you know, we, we want the Stanley Cup and, and we're going to do everything we can to, to get there and, and uh, bring that to New York.